Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Andrew, I want to personally say thank you for, for what you have been able to do for us in your, your adamant pursuit of the Word um, and how you have not wavered, you've not gotten into the grandstands, and you have delivered that to us. I might be one voice, but I represent millions and millions of changed lives. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my series teaching on Christian philosophy. I actually have a lot more in here that I didn't cover. This has been an abbreviated teaching on it. Our CDs and DVDs, this is eight weeks of teaching from television. I've only done this in two weeks. So this is a little abbreviated uh, teaching on it. This book is 280 pages. Today's my last day to offer this to you. We're asking for a donation of any amount to cover that. And this little pamphlet here, Observing All Things, takes some of the pictures, the charts, the graphs, and scriptures and things from the back of this book and uses it kind of as a reference thing. We're offering this as a free gift to you. And then we also have CDs, DVDs, a USB, and a study guide and remember, today's our last day to make this offer. So please go to the effort of getting this. I tell you, this is stuff that would not only bless you, but it would enable you to minister to other people. Like yesterday on my program, I went through abortion. I'm not going to talk about that today, but here's a little chart that's in my book, and it shows you that at two weeks, they already have fertilization within 12 to 24 hours after the sperm penetrates. Implantation in uh, position to grow rapidly in three weeks. And if you go down here at seven weeks, hands and feet begin to emerge. At eight weeks, movement is started along with breathing tubes, tiny earlobes at nine weeks. So this is something to just help you to recognize that this is a child and not just a hunk of flesh. So let me go and talk about homosexuality. Again, this whole teaching on Christian philosophy is talking about a Christian way of thinking and I'm specifically applying this to how should a Christian think about, we talked about evolution, how should a Christian think about abortion, and how should a Christian think about homosexuality, transgenderism, all the LGBTQ, XYZ stuff that's going on today. Let me give you some scriptures here on what the Bible says about this. And again, if you're going to have a Christian philosophy, it has to be based on what God has revealed in His Word. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Did you know Jesus quoted this when he was asked about divorce and remarriage? He said from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. There's only two genders according to Scripture. All of the other genders were created by the Democrats, but God only created two genders. And if you're going to have a biblical worldview, you cannot believe in multiple genders. You can't believe that you can just change your gender. Did you know that science says that every female has two X chromosomes in every cell in their body? A male has an X and a Y chromosome in every cell in their body. A person who has died a hundred years ago, you could go dig up their bones and do a test and find out whether they were male or female based on the chromosomes that are in that bone, even if you just had one section of bone. This whole thing that you can change your gender is completely contrary to science. It's completely contrary to uh, what the Scripture says. God says He only made male and female. And if you think that you are a female trapped in a male body, then what you are doing in a sense is coming against God and saying, God, you made a mistake. You put me in the wrong body. That's not what the Word of God teaches. In Genesis chapter 19, for anybody who believes the Word of God, this ought to put an end to you promoting and sanctioning homosexuality. Genesis 19 is where the two angels went down to Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot took them into his house. The men of the city came and wanted to have sexual relationships with these two angels. Angels don't always appear with wings and, you know, look somehow or another supernatural. They can look very human. It says that some have entertained angels unaware out of Hebrews chapter 13. So 
THESE ANGELS LOOK LIKE JUST MEN, AND THE MEN OF SODOM AND GOMORRAH WANTED TO COME AND HAVE SEXUAL RELATIONSHIPS WITH THEM, AND THE ANGELS TOOK LOT AND HIS WIFE AND TWO DAUGHTERS OUT OF THE CITY, AND THEY RAINED FIRE DOWN, FIRE AND BRIMSTONE, AND DESTROYED SODOM AND GOMORRAH AND TURNED THEM INTO JUST TOTAL DEVASTATION. FOR ANYBODY WHO WONDERS ABOUT WHAT DOES GOD THINK ABOUT HOMOSEXUALITY, THERE ARE SOME CHURCHES SAYING THAT GOD PROMOTES HOMOSEXUALITY AND THAT HOMOSEXUALITY IS OKAY. IT'S NOT OKAY. IT'S FORGIVABLE. I DON'T BELIEVE IT'S in UNPARDONABLE. I, I HAVE COMPASSION ON PEOPLE WHO'VE STRUGGLED WITH HOMOSEXUALITY, AND ESPECIALLY IF THEY'VE BEEN ABUSED FROM THE TIME THAT THEY WERE A KID AND IF THEY WERE RAISED IN THIS, YOU CAN HAVE COMPASSION ON THEM, BUT IT'S STILL SIN. IT'S STILL WRONG. AND THERE IS FORGIVENESS. I DON'T BELIEVE THAT HOMOSEXUALITY IS THE WORST SIN. I THINK THE WORST SIN OF ALL IS RELIGIOUS SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS, WHERE YOU THINK THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER GOD OWES YOU SALVATION. I THINK THAT THAT'S THE WORST SIN OF THEM ALL. DID YOU KNOW JESUS DEALT WITH PEOPLE THAT WERE IN ADULTERY? HE DEALT WITH MATTHEW, WHO WAS A TAX COLLECTOR, WHO WAS A TRAITOR TO THE JEWISH NATION AND A THIEF AND STOLE MONEY FROM PEOPLE. HE DEALT WITH PEOPLE WHO MURDERED OTHER PEOPLE. HE WAS MERCIFUL TO ALL KINDS OF PEOPLE. THE ONLY PEOPLE THAT JESUS REALLY REBUKED WERE RELIGIOUS, SELF-RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE. SO THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN JAMES CHAPTER 2, VERSE 10, THAT IF YOU KEEP THE WHOLE LAW AND YET OFFEND IN ONE POINT, YOU BECOME GUILTY OF ALL. SO IN ONE SENSE, SIN IS SIN. DOESN'T MATTER IF IT'S BIG SIN OR A LITTLE SIN. BUT IF YOU HAD TO CATEGORIZE SIN, I ACTUALLY THINK THE SIN OF SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS IS WORSE THAN HOMOSEXUALITY OR ANYTHING ELSE. BECAUSE YOU'RE SAYING, IN A SENSE, I DON'T NEED SALVATION. I'M GOOD ON MY OWN. JESUS DOESN'T BENEFIT ME ANYTHING. THAT'S THE WORST SIN OF ALL. BUT ALL THAT BEING SAID, HOMOSEXUALITY IS STILL A SIN, AND YOU CAN'T, YOU CAN'T USE THE WORD OF GOD TO JUSTIFY HOMOSEXUALITY. YOU CAN USE THE WORD OF GOD TO SAY THAT YOU CAN BE FORGIVEN OF IT IF YOU REPENT, BUT YOU CAN'T JUSTIFY IT AT ALL. AND GENESIS CHAPTER 19 SHOWS THAT. IN LEVITICUS CHAPTER 18 AND VERSE 22, IT'S A COMMAND, THOU SHALT NOT LIE WITH MANKIND AS WITH WOMANKIND. IT IS AN ABOMINATION. HOW DO YOU GET AROUND THAT SCRIPTURE? PEOPLE BASICALLY JUST SAY, WELL, THE BIBLE ISN'T REAL, IT ISN'T RIGHT, IT DOESN'T APPLY TO US TODAY, BUT IF YOU'RE GOING TO HAVE A CHRISTIAN PHILOSOPHY, A BIBLICAL PHILOSOPHY, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT HOMOSEXUALITY IS SIN. I'VE HAD SOMEBODY BEFORE SAY THE WORD HOMOSEXUAL ISN'T EVEN USED IN THE BIBLE. BOY, I'M TRYING TO BE POLITE HERE, BUT THAT IS JUST IGNORANCE GONE TO SEED. THE WORD HOMOSEXUAL WASN'T EVEN INVENTED AND USED UNTIL THE LATE 1800s IN THE BIBLE. THE KING JAMES BIBLE WAS WRITTEN IN, six, in six, THE EARLY 1600s. SOME OF THE MODERN TRANSLATIONS, THEY DO USE THE WORD HOMOSEXUALITY. BUT FOR SOMEBODY TO SAY THAT THE WORD HOMOSEXUALITY ISN'T IN THE BIBLE AND IT'S NOT EVEN TALKED ABOUT, THAT IS JUST TOTALLY DISHONEST. THAT IS CROOKED. THAT'S DEMONIC THAT SOMEBODY WOULD TRY AND TAKE THAT APPROACH. OF COURSE, IT DOESN'T USE THE WORD HOMOSEXUAL BECAUSE IT'S A MODERN WORD, BUT I GUARANTEE YOU IT TALKS ABOUT MAN LAYING WITH MANKIND, HAVING SEXUAL RELATIONSHIPS TO MEN, TO WOMEN. THAT'S FORBIDDEN IN SCRIPTURE. LEVITICUS CHAPTER 20, VERSE 13 SAYS, IF A MAN ALSO LIE WITH MANKIND AS HE LIETH WITH A WOMAN, BOTH OF THEM HAVE COMMITTED AN ABOMINATION. THEY SHALL SURELY BE PUT TO DEATH. THEIR BLOOD SHALL BE UPON THEM. AGAIN, THIS SHOWS THAT THAT IS SIN. IT IS AN ABOMINATION. IT'S A FORGIVABLE SIN IF PEOPLE REPENT, BUT IF YOU DON'T REPENT AND YOU SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER ARE THINKING THAT GOD SANCTIONS HOMOSEXUALITY, YOU ARE DEAD WRONG. DEUTERONOMY CHAPTER 23, VERSE 17 SAYS, THERE SHALL BE NO WHORE OF THE DAUGHTERS OF ISRAEL, NOR A SODOMITE, WHICH IS TALKING ABOUT A HOMOSEXUAL, TALKING ABOUT PEOPLE THAT CAME FROM SODOM, THEY WERE PRACTICING HOMOSEXUALITY AND THEY WERE CALLED SODOMITES. AND SO IT SAYS THERE WILL BE NO WHORE OF THE DAUGHTERS OF ISRAEL, NOR A SODOMITE OF THE SONS OF ISRAEL. THOU SHALT NOT BRING THE HIRE OF A WHORE OR THE PRICE OF A DOG, WHICH IS TALKING ABOUT SODOMY, HOMOSEXUALITY, COMPARING IT TO THE WAY DOGS ACT, INTO THE HOUSE OF THE LORD THY GOD FOR ANY VOW, FOR EVEN BOTH OF THESE ARE AN ABOMINATION UNTO THE LORD. AGAIN, HOMOSEXUALITY IS FORGIVABLE. GOD LOVES HOMOSEXUALS, BUT HE HATES THE sin OF HOMOSEXUALITY. 
And if a person doesn't repent of it, they'd go to hell, the same as a person that doesn't repent of being self-righteous, the person who doesn't repent of ab operating in anger or stealing or lying or anything else. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 24 says, And there were also sodomites, talking about homosexuals in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Again, this is talking about homosexuality, and it was not approved of God. In Romans chapter 1, Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, It's the good news, the nearly too good to be true news of the grace of God that produces salvation in men. And people will rebel at that and think, no, you've got to tell people how much God hates their sin and things like this. Verses 18 through 20 show you that they already know in their heart right and wrong. There's an intuitive knowledge of God on the inside of every person so that even their eternal, even God's eternal power and Godhead are known so that they're without excuse. But then in verse 21, it begins to start listing progressive steps that you can take away from God and how you can harden your heart towards God. They're progressive. It doesn't happen all at once. And so in verse 21, it begins to talk about when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Man, this is really descriptive of our day and age. People today think they're so enlightened and they look at anybody who adheres to the biblical standards of morality as being bigots or, or somehow or another ignorant and you aren't enlightened. It's just the opposite. These people are professing themselves to be wise, but they become fools. And listen to what the Bible says here about these progressive steps away. The last step is homosexuality. It's like if you had a train going to being reprobate to where you no longer have any conviction, your conscience doesn't work, you are just totally given over to evil. The last stop on that train is homosexuality. Beyond that is being reprobate. And boy, some people are shocked at what I'm saying. I'm reading straight out of Scripture. Here's Romans chapter 1, verse 24. It says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That's talking about lesbianism, and it calls it a vile affection. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. Unseemly means that it's ungodly. It's not right. And received in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat, talking about sexually transmitted diseases. It was just that they get things like that. That doesn't mean that God did it to them, but anytime you pervert, per, uh, uh, pervert nature, there's going to be consequences. You know, if you walk off a 10-story building and just ignore the law of gravity, I guarantee you, you're going to splat on the sidewalk. And that's just punishment. If you think that somehow or another you can fly when you can't, it doesn't mean that God's one that pushed you off. It doesn't mean that God's one that caused it. It's just the results of the way you live. And people who live in these abnormal, perverted sexual realities, it's just natural. It's just that you have all of these sexual transmitted diseases. Quit doing it. Amen. And so again, it says, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, man with man, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So now it begins to describe what a reprobate mind is. It's a mind that no longer has any fear of God, no conscience, no conviction of their morals. It says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, 
whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Boy, this is so descriptive of our world today. I, you know, I just saw something where they have, you know, taken down Christmas uh, things because that offends people. And yet I think it, I'm not sure the state, I think it was Ohio, I might miss this, but they actually put up a statue to Satan, to Satanism. And some guy came in and cut the head off, which I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but now they are openly worshiping the devil. They are openly promoting homosexuality, transgenderism, all kinds of sexual immorality. It's, it's abnormal today to have a show where people don't wait until after marriage to have sex. It's like it's the normal thing. All of this is sexual perversion, and it's descriptive of people that have had their conscience seared with a hot iron, that they no longer have any conscience. And it says over in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4, where it's describing this, it says they are doctrines of devils. Let me just turn over and read that. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says that in the last days, men shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, etc. In the last days, this is one of the signs of the last days, and the very fact that people today are having pride parades and promoting things that are an abomination to God. They are actually uh, practicing pedophilia where they take young children and give them hormone blockers and cut off parts of their bodies and do sex reassignment surgeries thinking that you can be a boy in a girl's body or vice versa. That stuff is demonic. It's of the devil. And I know that there's a lot of people offended. There's even a lot of Christians offended by the things that I'm saying. I'm not saying anything that isn't Scripture. The truth is most Christians today won't even stand up and speak the truth. Now, I will say this, that God loves people that have been caught in these things, and God loves you. And if you are guilty of any of the things I'm talking about, there can be total forgiveness there can be total restoration so that as I was teaching on a previous teaching out of Isaiah, it says you shall forget the shame of your widowhood and all of these things. You can be so totally forgiven that there is no more conscience of sin. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. I believe in total restoration. I believe in total forgiveness, but only if you turn from those things and quit embracing it. Now, you might still struggle with some things because it takes a while to renew your mind and to come out of some things. There is grace and there's mercy, but for a person to just persist and brag about homosexuality, brag about transgenderism, tr brag about all of this stuff and say that this is the way that God made them, that is a total lie. That is a total misrepresentation of Scripture. Again, that is not a Christian philosophy. If you want to have a Christian way of thinking, you have to base it on the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And some people would say, well, then, man, who can get in? Because nearly all of us have stolen something or been covetous or we've done something wrong. The next verse goes on to say, and such were some of you, but you've been washed, but you've been cleansed, you've been sanctified. This is just saying that if you persist in these things and embrace this and think that this is normal and you reject God's standard and you make yourself your own God and you establish your own standard of morality, you can't be born again. You can't be, come to the Lord like that. But if you will repent, such were some of you. You can be cleansed of all of these things. I'm not saying any of these things 
to sit there and just hate these people. I love people. I've got people on staff with me that have struggled with homosexuality, and I've never treated them any way but gracious. I've not fired them. I've dealt with them. Some of them have been with me for decades, and I have not rejected them, but I reject their lifestyle, and I do not promote that lifestyle, and I told them that we are not going to promote that lifestyle in our ministry. And so I am not against people, but I am against these things because they are perversions. It is not the way God made us to be. It is not the way God's Word tells us to live. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. That's talking about homosexuality. For man-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. This is the Apostle Paul talking, and he's talking about all of these things are perversions, and this is what the law was given for. Let me just go through some stats. The lifespan of um, average homosexual is reduced by 20 years. So this is the uh, survey that was done on homosexuals in the United States and Denmark, and it says the latter of which is acknowledged to be the highest tolerance of homosexuality, both die on average in their early 50s or in their 40s if AIDS is the cause of death. So average 50s would be the normal homosexual. If AIDS is involved, it shortens it to the 40s. And the average lifespan for all residents in either country ranges from the mid to upper 70s. It cuts at least 20 years off of their life. You know, I said this one time, and it's been taken out of context, and I'm sure there will be people that will try and take this out of context, but if you do, it's your problem. It's not mine. I'm not against anybody, and I don't hate anybody. I love you enough to tell you the truth. But I said that they put a warning on cigarettes that it'll shorten your life, and the average cigarette smoker loses about seven years. According to this stat, the average homosexual loses about 20 years on their life. If we weren't hypocritical, if we were going to be even, we would put a warning on homosexuality that it lessens your life. But they won't do that on homosexuality. That's not politically correct. I had somebody say that I was saying that uh, we should kill all homosexuals in the Woodland Park area. They took this statement right here and saying that we ought to take 20 years off of their life. That is just totally dishonest. The suicide rate among homosexuals is two or three times what it is among heterosexuals, and the homosexuals will say, that's because nobody loves me and everybody rejects me. No, it's because your own heart condemns you. And on and on and on I could go. I've got this little booklet that has these scriptures I was reading from today. It has these stats in here. It's got charts, different things. This is just a small portion of this 280-page book. Today is my last day to advertise this over television, and so we're asking for a donation of any amount for the book. We're giving away this little pamphlet on observing all things as a freebie, and then we have CDs, DVDs, a USB, and a study guide. Listen to our announcer, and please call or write to receive these materials today. Andrew is offering his booklet, Observing All Things, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Christian Philosophy, is available as a book and study guide. This series is also available as a nine disc CD album, TV, DVD album, and USB made from our daily television broadcast aired in 2012. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. 
or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. So growing up, I've, I've been around believers, and one thing that I saw that lacked is being able to operate in the, the works of the Spirit, being able to see signs and wonders and things that are found in the book of Acts. But coming to Karis, man, to see people who are not only uh, in love with Jesus, but in love with His Word and are able to operate in those areas in, in uh, both truth, uh, grace, and power, I think was uh, something that definitely changed my life. Uh, I, I don't think I'm any ways uh, perfect in, in maturity or anything like that, but I'm definitely equipped to take the next steps. I went on a missions trip out to Oklahoma, and man, it was actually because of that that I'm doing what I'm doing right now, helping out with my church down in the Springs, and uh, yeah, seeing the fruit that I see in my life. So I'm thankful for that experience and excited to go on the next step with my good friend, my savior, uh, Jesus and to know him now that much more is changed my life. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Caris Bible College, Toronto. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a Grace Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Go to awmc.ca or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647 348-2220. Also, to learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. Remember, that's awmc.ca. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today. I want to make you aware that we have what we call our Heritage Giving Community, and this is for people who want to give an end-of-life gift to the ministry. You know, many of you have just been giving and giving, and one of the ways to give is in your will to put the ministry in there and take your assets at the end of your life and use it to promote the gospel. And so we now have this heritage giving community that we have put together. And if you're interested in doing something like that, I'd encourage you to contact us. We'll have all the information on the screen. And this is just a way of you taking the blessing that God has given you and putting it to work even after it's time for you to go and be with the Lord. You'll be blessed.